And uh, I guess we'll start first with the game that happened this afternoon to kick off the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The New York Islanders go into the Lions' den, uh, into Tampa, and they take game one with a really clean, really solid effort. Um, Obviously, this is the way that they played all season. They play incredible system, defensive hockey. They are very opportunistic, but they also don't take a lot of penalties. Um, and two opportunistic chances, Barzell on a, on a quick break, and then uh, a shot from the point from Pulak that should have been saved by Vasilevsky and ended up being a huge uh, miss for him because Tampa scores late with the, the net pulled, but they cannot – tie things up and and if you're the islanders you got to have a supreme amount of confidence now obviously losing last year in this same series in this same situation uh has left you with some scars and left you with some learning experiences and uh they've come out and made a statement they are here and they are for real and uh tampa's just got to adjust as they've had to do quite a few times over the past couple of years and they've had their success, but uh, we'll see how they respond in game two. Cause the Islanders method seems really sustainable and, and they're still managing to be successful. And it might be this time where they finally get over that third round hump. Yeah. Just the second time in the playoffs so far that the lightning have been held to one goal. And that really feels like what the Islanders did. That was noteworthy, hard to imagine you can sustain that, but the offense hasn't been as hard to come by, especially in that Bruins series as I thought it would be for them. So interested to see what counter adjustments the lightning make. I caught bits and pieces of it and I thought Varlamov looked more than sick at times, (sighs) holding off some of the chances that the lightning generated. But yeah, we're in the third round. Yeah, definitely part of my sports coma where I had been watching Euro and I watched the end of the French Open. And then at three o'clock, it was basketball, hockey, Euro and baseball all going at the same time. And it was just kind of flip, 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 flip through each channel and um, definitely missed on some pieces of games because I was too busy trying to consume it all at once. But uh, yeah, definitely caught the the end of this game most of the third period because of the basketball game being pretty much over uh and yeah really surprised to see that tampa couldn't get anything going in the other series which will kick off uh tomorrow Tomorrow. today if you're listening to it on monday and uh that will be between the vegas golden knights and the montreal canadians vegas participating in their third i guess conference finals you would call it their third third round in the four years that they have existed as a franchise, uh, the fans just know immediate success. And the Montreal Can- Canadiens are Canada's champion, although I don't know if much of Canada is really cheering them on behind them, uh, but they are there and they were really, really great. And you got to give them their credit. They really dominated the North Division there <laughs> going on a, what was it? A seven game unbeaten run now out of the North Division. And they will see if they're this similar brand of hockey can apply to a team that is going to have much better defensive system than anything they've seen so far. Um, similar goaltending. And then Vegas is a team that seems to morph its style depending on what team they play. And they're just deep all the way through uh, all three D pairs, all four forward lines. And, and Montreal is going to have their hands full because their calling card so far has been kind of weathering the storm and capitalizing on chances. And now they're going up against a team that is pretty uh, string <laughs> stingy in terms of allowing chances and have a great defensive core and can kind of match their style. And it'll be really interesting to see how Montreal will manage to create offense. And uh, I definitely see Vegas having the upper hand in this series. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I I would say the Canadians were the storm in the Jets series, but I can see the Habs adapting to that Vegas brand of hockey and we get something similar to what a lot of the Wild series was where it's a low scoring affair, a goaltender duo and never count Carey Price out in one of those. So two stellar performances and the Habs players don't need 
to be amazing for that many games. I'm really interested. I think both teams have some strong adaptions they're going to need to make. Uh, mainly for the Habs, what you pointed out, the Golden Knights defensively, their top four, just so much better than what the Jets have, as well as the Leafs. But uh, for Vegas, like their offense was coming completely off Colorado's like run and gun style of offense as a counterattack. And I think that's going to be gone. So they're going to have to reboot the system and figure out what the offensive keys of success to success are. So I'm wondering if it's going to be a bit of a probing first game, first two games, which you never know. I'd say that it could also just go absolutely wide open. You really never know with hockey. But those are the things on my mind heading into the series. Here's why I think it'll be a little wide open to begin. Montreal has not played in a building with more than 5,000 fans in nearly two years. Uh, and this will be their first experience traveling <laughs> uh, somewhere as far away as Vegas and having to go into T-Mobile Arena and, and meet that absolutely deafening crowd um, with a lot of the lights and a lot of the action going on. And um, it's a young team in Montreal, of course. They have the playoff experience from some of their vets, but the, the core of this team is driven by those younger guys. And it's going to be their first experience in a while in an atmosphere like this. And I think Vegas is really going to feed off that energy and come out with, with some ferocity. So that's, that would be my reasoning behind it starting uh, much more open than you might expect in a traditional series where they're trying to poke and prod each other and, and look for weaknesses. <laughs> 